This Mazurka Opus 17, number four, in A minor, composed in 1832, 1833 time period, was likely sketched earlier by Frédéric Chopin. It's a masterpiece of the genre of mazurkas, more like a nocturne or a fantasy, and yet it's one of his most famous of the mazurkas. Chopin composed 58 mazurkas of some roughly 200 solo pieces or altogether 230 pieces that he composed, 58 are mazurkas. He composed mazurkas from the beginning of his life until the end of his life. Of course, a dance form in triple time, as we know. He took gestures from the Polish countryside, his beloved homeland and put them into his mazurkas and raised them to the highest echelons of sophistication and elan. 
they're all gems and diamonds. This one is especially famous. So I would like to look at this a little bit with you today, if I may. Chopin was fastidious about his tempo markings. It says lento ma non troppo. Lento ma non troppo. I would like to change the order of the, the emphasis of the words, if I may, to lento ma non troppo. Slow, but not too slow. We want to keep a certain framework. We want to keep a certain cohesiveness of this wondrous, amazing piece. I had uh, someone write to me once uh, and say, uh, is, is this piece difficult to perform? Yeah, yeah, it's difficult to perform, definitely. You could argue anything Chopin wrote is difficult to perform. The challenge with mazurkas is there's a lot happening in a short space of time and Chopin never wasted a note. That is also the amazing beauty of his pieces. So let's look at this a little bit here. Uh, bars one to three. You will notice I play this with the left hand. Many people do, and it's perfect. Lately, and I did this for years, lately I've taken this melody line here with the right hand. Then in bar four, a little emphasis on the first triplet, and then count the rest of the beats. Two, three. Give that plenty of space. It's very important how you start this mazurka, or any, any, any piece. You want to set a mood, especially in this piece, yes? So. That's your mazurka. Yam, papam. What do we have? We have a dotted eighth, followed by a sixteenth, followed by the longer note in this case is a quarter note. Listen to the left hand alone. with the right hand. Gosh, what do we have here? We have chromaticism. Dissonance. Chopin, this piece is generations ahead of its time. Chopin influenced all composer pianists who came after him, Debussy, Skriabin, uh, Rachmaninoff, Grieg, even Wagner. So I think it's important to understand the, uh, the background and, and what Chopin is giving us here. I've even had comments about this mazurka that it sounds jazzy. OK, I'll take it. That's fine. Here we have this turn. I'd like to hear every note. You will note what I did here. I took a little breath of air between the second and third beat. And with this I want to say I think it's important in, in mazurka playing to pay attention how we handle the second and third beats especially, uh, to give them their full value. Now sometimes you're going to be moving into a gesture where uh, you may rush one or two of these along. This is, this is fine, but as a rule we want to keep uh, the second and third beat or even a breath of air you can do. Not every time, but it's um, once in a while, it's a good idea because it gives space. It gives breathing to the whole mazurka form, in my opinion. OK, now the second time we have the same melody. Would we not consider 
Um, I mean, this, this theme ap appears four times in four pages. To play differently once, we can. Three or four different colors, or one or two different colors, OK? Play it a little differently. In this bar, you have a group of six notes. I stretch it out a little bit. I, I like to, uh, I, I believe it's bar 29. Uh, I like to stretch those notes out. I'll be, imagine you're in 1830s in a Parisian salon, and all the great families are there. Rothschild, good friends with Chopin, uh, Polish families, Pototsky, Zamoyski, uh, Franz Liszt, Georges Sand, sitting on their divans listening to this great master, Frédéric Chopin, playing his mazurkas, his Souvenir de la Pologne, yes? So I like to stretch this out a little bit. Doesn't have to be that way, it's just my idea. You can play that faster if you want. I like to bring it out. Now we come into a development section here. You can play that in a number of ways. Um, there's no change in tempo indication there, but a lot of uh, fine pianists I've heard put some energy into it or just play it plain. It's fine. Um, record yourself. You know, the best advice I can give, record yourself and see what it is that, that you like. There's possibilities here. Chopin gives us lots of room in the framework of his mazurkas. Now, if you would just look at this for one moment with me. Let's listen to that. This is 20th century. It was composed in, what, 1832, right? Likely sketched earlier. Futuristic. Let's hear this. Gosh. You know, Mazurkas took Europe by storm. Uh, critics were shocked, even offended. What, he's doing this, doing that, doing this, doing that, yeah. Yes. As Alfred Cortot used to say, Genie de Chopin. <laughs> Genie de Chopin. We are in A major, just like that from A minor, right? Now, if you look at my left hand, I'm playing a fifth. This is reminiscent of a Polish bagpipe type instrument that played drones. This is what he saw in the kind. Also, you had various string instruments, drones. You see this all over Chopin's mazurkas. The gestures, the influence from the Polish countryside, yes? But still, your right hand is your singer. Gosh, here's another gosh moment. Look at this. Dissonance. We want to taste this a little bit.
the concept of rubato, a little example here, a lengthening or a shortening of a note or phrase, right? The same major section can be played in a variety of ways. I've heard pianists play this in a ferocious virtuoso way. Perfect, fine, it works, it's wonderful. Or you can build up slowly. At the top of the music it says dolce. Well, you can also play dolce. There are a variety of ways. Chopin gives us lots of room with which to do things and to use our good imagination. Record yourself, dear friends. I, I've said this before. Record yourself and see what you like, yes? Okay, so we are at this uh, section. Right? We come back to the theme for the fourth time. You will notice when I came back, to, I, I mixed it up a little bit. play it differently than the way I play. It's kind of a coda thing. Here you have real mazurka and you have accent marks shown here where the rest of the mazurka they're rare. Played it with some more energy, just as an idea. I admire Alfred Brendel for many reasons, as we all do, including his writings. In an essay I read once that he, he said the music, the notes must lift off the page, yes? Must lift off the page. And for me, this means that the music must become yours. Interesting, I just thought of, a, of, a, of an interview I saw with um, the famous Austrian composer Robert Stolz. Just reminded me of this. And he said, I'll say it in, in German first, and I'll translate it, of course. Das Beste im Leben ist, was man verschenkt. Das Beste im Leben ist, was man verschenkt. The best in life is what you give away, what you gift to someone. Make this your special gift, this mazurka, to your listeners, your audiences, a loved one, to yourself. As Frederick Chopin would say in his own language, bardzo serdecznie dziękuję. Thank you very much. See you again. Cheers. <laughs>